Kids and people who care But age now seems better than they probably were But I know they'll always be special to me And are calling me back to where I want to be Back with the faces I knew as a child No day was too long and no game was too wild And I know that I can't relive this again But it's good to remember these things now and then I'm proud to say that this is my home To live with the people that I've always known Here in this place where I've always belonged I'm proud to say this is my home Things that have changed I see some that have gone And some that remain But I know No matter how different it seems This is the place that holds all of my dreams From the day we arrive To the day we depart Home holds a special place Deep in my heart And I know it will travel All over this earth I'll always return to the place of my birth I'm proud to say that this is my home To live with the people that I've always known Here in this place where I've always belonged I'm proud to say this is my home I'm proud to say that this is my home To live with the people Say that this is my home To live with the people that I've always known Here in this place where I've always belonged I'm proud to say this is my For deep inside, 
was a burning pride in the town that I loved so well. There was music there in the dairy air, like a language that we all could all understand. I remember the day when I earned my first pay when I played in a small pickup band. There I spent my youth, and to tell you the truth, I was sad to leave it all behind me. For I learned about life, and I found me a wife in the town I love so well. How my eyes have burned To see how a town Could be brought to its knees By the armored cars And the bombed out bars And the gas that hangs on to every their tanks and their guns oh my god what have they done to the town I love so well now the music's gone but they still carry on for their spirits been bruised never broke they will not forget, though their hearts are set on tomorrow and peace once again. But what's done is done, and what's won is won, and what's lost is lost and gone forever. I can only pray for a bright, brand new day in the town I love so well. I can only pray for a bright, brand new day in the town I love so well.
last or final day, the 7th of December, the year 2008. And one of the most historic days for Drum Colour Bradford as they take part in their first Munster Senior Football Club final against the clear champions Kilmoria Bricken. A daunting task they face as they parade around the field here today. And I'll hand you over to my commentator, Tommy Cregan, to give you the line out of the teams. Yes, indeed, a historic day it is for Drum Bradford GA. Will they become the first Limerick club? to ever win it. It was won in 77 by a Limerick team, Tormund College. They wouldn't exactly be a club. There only one Limerick man playing for them on that occasion. Captain by a Kerry man, Pat Spillane. Our captain today is from the Noctoosh, Thomas Midlachlan. Our Drum Bradford team lines out the exact same as the last, the last day against Nemo Rangers. Eamon Scholard in goal. Dio Leary, Tommy Stack and Mikey Clancy make up the full back line. We have a very strong half back line of Neil Conway, Captain Tom Midlachlan and Owen Barry. Midfield is Jason Stokes and Pat Donnelly. We have a half forward line of Derry McCarthy, Michal Reedy, and Shawnee Buckley. And inside in the full forward line, Gary Egan, Ray Lynch, and Garrett Noonan. We have plenty of men in the bench as well, and indeed they could be used today. Kilmurray Brick in line out with Ian McHenry in the goals. Cornerback Declan Callaghan, Mark Killeen, and Martin McMahon. Half back, you have Shane Hickey as captain. Brendan Maloney with number six in his back, and in the Cochrane is on the other wing. Peter O'Doyer and Paul O'Connor in midfield with Michael Hogan, John Daly. He isn't John Daly from Torlius now, Dingle Daly. He's a different John Daly, but just as dangerous, I think. And Stephen Maloney. In the full forward line, Michael O'Connor, Audrey O'Dwyer, and Neil Noel Downs. As I spoke about John Daly, John Daly told me during the week he was the first man to score a point for Drum Bradford in Munster Championship football. And indeed, it's a, it's a proud record to have. John Daly isn't out there today, but you have 15 minutes. That will give every bit as much. And it will be a historic day for Drum Bradford today. But they're going to, have to give a performance just as good as they gave against Nemo Rangers. John, to have any chance here today? Yes, indeed, it's a daunting task. Kilmore and Brickin apparently have gone 23 games or 24 games without defeat this season. And for the record, the drum colour brought for subs are number 17, Kevin Cullahan, number 18, John O'Kelly, number 19, Mike Lowe Sullivan, better known as Brassie, number 20, Declan O'Connor, <coughs> 21, Jason Ryan. 22, Michael Bias, 23, Timmy Stokes, 24, Conor Brosnan, 25, Colin Lawton, and 26, Aidan Butler. The management team of John Ruther, coach Ned English, selectors of Mike Fahey, Mike Quaid, Gary Noon, and Jim Barry. Yeah, we have Chrissy McCarthy and Ross Carthy helpers, and physio Mary O'Keefe and Bridget Downs. It's a wonderful sight. Grand to see the sunshine. The last day we were here, the clouds are coming in over at the crack, the, the clear hills. But today the sun is shining. I hope it's not in, in favour of Kilmore Brickin. Conditions, just a slight breeze from left to right that pitch in impeccable order as the teams pull away from behind the band following the parade. And we shortly will have our own Naveen. Just as we wait for the playing of the national anthem, we must, uh, I must also thank our cameraman, Gary Hayes. Um, he's also av available for weddings and, <laughs> and uh, birthdays and christenings. So if you have any business, give it to Gary. in silence there for Miss, Mrs. Madigan from Drum Collar, her Bradford from Drum Collar. Uh, her family have been synonymous with the uh, Drum Collar Bradford GA down the years.
teams are going back into their positions and it looks as if from color Bradford are going to play into a, a slight breeze in this first half and for commentary I'll hand you over to Tommy it's need I'm asking you the thumbs up there from Johnny Welch anyway he's must be back yesterday Marty Morris here on the other side we could hardly swing a cat inside in the, inside in the press box here now at the moment does, all, does deadly take for positions the referee today is a carry man I hope he'll do us a few favours anyway and the referee at last he seemed to be very fair as well today it's Aidan Mengen from Kerry is he, looking, is he waiting for a ball he doesn't have a ball they're calling for a ball Jason Stokes again laying out at half forward it's a great sight to see the drum Bradford flag flying up on my right hand side in the Thorman Park in the background they'll have to play like a monster team today they'll have to fight for everything as the referee gets a ball Jerry Mullo still in the middle of the field Jerry Mullo will have to come off it Jason Stokes getting a bit of grief from his men but I'm sure he'll give it back that's it Jason Stokes is giving him a couple of belts he'd have done well with the Banshee Rovers Jason if he was with him I think his grandfather played with him as the ball has been thrown in and Drum Bradford trying to win it but it ends Ken Murray breaking up first to the ball and Peter Rodwire and instantly fouled by Shawnee Buckley bit of hype here all Referee needs camping down straight away. Peter O'Dwyer waiting to take this free of where he looked for John Daly. Indeed, it's out, it's out to the wing. And a good long ball into, in straight into John Daly, but John Daly doesn't get a sense that Tommy Stack got it, but he'll give a very poor ball out the field. And out again it is uh, Peter O'Dwyer got a good shoulder from Donnelly. And the ball goes into Daly. Daly is trying to shove off Tommy Stack. He won't shove him off too easy. Daly twisting, turning, surely over, carrying the ball. Referee, referee says no. Referee says that's a free in. I didn't think so, John. A bit of. A um, bit of pressure there straight away from Kilmory Rickon. Yes, I, I have a feeling from the very start that this, this referee is going to be uh, very strict and, and uh, there will be a freeze very easily got from him. Bit of Satanto helping about him there. I felt with the amount of steps he took, but all you know the way I know is going taking this free. A few yards, I said, 21 yard line. Surely he'll put Kilmory Rickon into the lead here. He's taking his time over it. Kicks it off the left boot, but this one is not going over the bar. This one is going wide. And Eamon Scholar is taking his first kick out of the game. A bad missed opportunity there, John, by Kilmory Abrikin. Yes, that's a chance lost by Kilmory Abrikin. And uh, it was a very, uh, uh, it didn't look a free at all. And uh, I think, you know what, it was um, rather fair now that ball went wide. Yes, indeed, a bit of a let off there for Drum Bradford. Jason is after coming down now. His men are still close to him. We wait for Eamon Scott to take this kick out. Kick out. Poor kick out, but it's landing down top of Owen Barry. Owen Barry tries to get a, a hand in. Indeed, he does, and he puts it out for a line ball to Kilmory Bricken. A lot of pressure here from Kilmory Bricken. We don't need this now. As Peter Odwyer is going to take in this line ball. No, indeed, he isn't in the cock and is taking it. Will he go for the long ball? No, he won't. He pops the shot to the captain, Shane Hickey. Hickey gives a long, high ball in down on top of Mikey Clancy inside. And Clancy defends it well. The Dio Leary. And it's Gary Egan, sorry, Gary Egan. Gets wins then. A rush. Soft free out there. Gary Egan wins. Not much in it, but as John Egan said, the referee. The referee won't. He's taking no missing player. John Egan was telling me it was a pull in the jersey. I can't even see down there with such a crowd inside in the commentary box here. No, Gary Egan, Tom McLaughlin. McLaughlin, that's up on top of his back. Referee gives a free to Tom McLaughlin. Had to be a free. Now it's on Barry. They're building again with this usual hand passing game. There's Derry McCarthy. Look where he is. Watch, that's Mikey Clancy. Clancy, will he pop it? No, he won't. He nearly ran into Jason Stokes. Shawnee Buckley is down the ground. He doesn't know what that's happening to him. Gary Egan, up to on Barry. Kilmory breaking their hunt. Dane packs as well. But Jason Stokes has the ball now. Stalks a dangerous ball to Pat Donnelly. Pat Donnelly holds on to it. But again, given away very, very easily. But Donnelly hits back with a good bent of a shoulder to Michael Hogan. Andrew Bradford is still fighting the ball with Paul O'Connor and Pat Donnelly. And now the ball goes to Stephen Maloney. Maloney gives a long high ball in. Mikey Clancy and Tommy Stack inside. But neither of them can win it. It's said it's in the number 15. No alone. So puts the ball wide of the post. That would have been an inspirational score, John. That was a dangerous, dangerous ball. A very dangerous ball. And... and uh a lot of our passes are going astray, which didn't go against go astray against Nemo, and uh, a great feeling there from the full forward, and very lucky to get away with it. Indeed, we're living on the edge here at the moment now. 
Kilmory Brickham could easily be up two points. They took the opportunity. We won't be as lucky as, as we were with Nemo the last day. We, Nemo kicked maybe 14 wides. I know they were kicked under pressure. As the ball again is brought home from Eamon Scholar. Shawnee Buckley goes highest for it, but he doesn't bring it down. Owen Barry racing onto the ball against Pete, with Pete Rodwire. Owen Barry kind of pushed off the ball there, but again, it's Declan Callahan. Pete Rodwire, long ball in again. D. Leary maybe a little push in the back there, but the referee says nothing. D. Leary is a tight man. And it's, that's surely overcarrying, but the referee again gives another very soft free in. And that was surely overcarrying. But they, talk, they take the free quick and all, with Audrey Rodwire. And the number eight, Peter Rodwell, gives it in. It's being defended inside. Neil Comey can't do much referee. I think he will blow his whistle again, but he doesn't. They said it's out to Stephen Maloney. Maloney is bearing down a goal. Has a kick in. Eamon Scholar surely holds inside. Yes, indeed, he does. Well done, Eamon. Eamon gets it out to Dio Leary. Dio Leary to Shawnee with Gary Egan. Jason Stokes now midfield to Pat Donnelly. Pat Donnelly to Derry McCarthy. Derry turns and he shows a clean Perry heels to his men. And it's a foul referee that could nearly even be a yellow card. Stephen Maloney, they are very cynical and Derry McCarthy. Dales takes the ball fast into Garrett Noonan. Garrett needs a good game today. He gets to the ball. He holds on to does well to hold on to three. Kilmurray breaking by his round and the referee is giving nothing soft to us, I'm afraid. Into Jason Stokes and Jason gives it to Ray. Can Ray pop it out? Yes, he pops it on Barry. There's no one inside. There isn't a man from Drum Bradford inside the 21 yard line. Jason Stokes playing with the ball outside to Gary Egan. Gary Egan, what will I do with it? He gives it to Dez. Dez to Pat Donnelly, but Pat Donnelly, look, Dez can't get it up. Bit of soccer skill there, touch of Ronaldo about him. Referee, he's all over him, but the referee says, no way, that's no free. And number six, Brendan Maloney boots it out the field. And it's a line ball for Drum Braff in the halfway line. Neil Conway looking for the ball. And indeed, he gets the ball. Back to Tom McLaughlin. Tom McLaughlin could have been pulled for off the ground there, it wasn't far off him. That's a rugby tackle referee. He should have went for his notebook there, he was thinking about it. He gave a black car, a black book, so what good is a black book? Into Michal Reedy, Michal Reedy surely never pushing the back, referee says no, ball off the ground. Free out, Kilmore, you This is very frantic at the moment, John. Very, very frantic and I, I think this referee is going to be very fond of his whistle. Uh, does, he's not going to allow no tackle take less, it's, it's almost a free immediately. Big long ball in again, Mikey Clancy was nearly over that ball there, but he loses it to Noel Downs. Downs is being held outside, an outrageous effort from Downs, and straight into the hands of Eamon Scholar, Eamon Scholar to Tommy Stack, or Tom McLaughlin, Tom McLaughlin up to Jason Stokes. Jason Stokes shrugs off that tackle, he says I'm better than that. Shawnee is roaring for the ball, he doesn't get a referee, that's a total obstruction, this is like cross midline you'll be playing, that's obstruction off the ball. Referee says get up Shawnee Buckley, and give you nothing, Pat Donnelly is going for the kill in midfield again. But this man is playing a lot of the ball, Stephen Maloney. But Maloney gives it again, the referee gives a free. He's dead down us at the moment, the referee. He won't do us any favours. Could you expect any more? I don't know. Garrett Noonan calming things down a bit. The Lions man is coming in now. I hope to Shawnee Buckley's incident he's going to highlight the referee because that was definitely a yellow card there. I'd say hey, the referee doesn't know what he's doing at the moment. He's going up, going to pull out Neil O'Card anyway. Yes, indeed, he's calling over the number 12, I believe. That's a good, that's a good decision, though, by the lines, I must say. Because that, that was um, obstruction off the ball, no need for it. He's going to pull out Neil O'Card. Yes, indeed, it is Neil O'Card from the referee. First yellow card of the game. And Shawnee Buckley's men. This is the captain. Shane Hickey. As the ball goes into the number 12 for White Hot was being booked Steve Maloney. Maloney now playing outside and out in the corner. He's trying to get the ball in. He won't get much outside off Neil Conway. Will they try for a long ball instead? They won't. They try for a cute ball straight across the middle of the field. And it's chipped in by Peter Rodwell. And it's well held inside in the jersey pulled by, by Mikey Clancy, but Clancy gets away with it in the ball again. A pure sin into Eamon Scholar's hands. That's the third time they've done they've dropped the ball into the keeper's hands, which is a pure disaster. Now Gary Egan coming out with the ball. Derry McCarthy. Derry is playing a lot of ball back there on the half back line. Gary Egan. And now Derry McCarthy. Saw him in the ball around the middle of the field. He's doing a lot of messing with it. Derry maybe should have lifted it off and it's been taken off him by Peter Rodwell. 
I know the number four, Martin McMahon, coming down the field with the ball and gives it in, but Dealey Ari is there, Niall Conway is there with the challenge. And it's another line ball to Kilmore, a brick, and maybe a bit of talking a bit much out of the ball there, Derry. Maybe it should have been late, late it off. It's Kilmore, a brick, and taking this line ball. Another big, high, long ball in to top, Mikey Clancy inside. Can Clancy get a fist? No, he can't get anything at all to because it's John Daly. He gets the ball inside, he comes out the field, he's out far done, further out the field, he's coming with the ball. If he gets it, they could take it off from outside there. But they can, Jason Stokes, Niall Conway, they're all fighting for the ball inside of Audrey Maguire. He gives it back out to Peter O'Dwyer, who's playing off a lot of football in this game. O'Dwyer is surely over carrying the ball, referee. The referee says no, and it goes into Michael O'Dwyer, who kicks this and yet another wide for Kilmoria breaking. But John sustained pressure at the moment from Kilmoria. Sustained pressure on Drumcolor Bradford and not, not at the rest of the tall today. Uh, they're, they're very, very slow to the, out of the blocks and uh, our big hitters are not coming into force. No, as Eamon Scholar takes his kick out. Drum Bradford really needs to put a bit of pressure on to get a score, get, even get, a, get the ball inside, up, to the, up to the 21-yard line because there's nothing happening once they get the ball as far as midfield. It's coming straight back down top of them again. But I'm sure they won't panic. Eamon Scholar takes his kick out. Landing down on top of Jason Stokes. Jason tries to get up for it, but he can't get high enough. And it's up to, lands to Paul O'Connor. Another big, long, high ball in from Declan Callanan. In towards the Tommy Stack inside, punches it out to McLaughlin. McLaughlin to Gary Egan. Gary Egan to Niall Conway. Conway to Owen Barry. Owen Barry twisting and turning. Oh, get rid of it, get rid of it. Tommy Stack. D O'Leary. Jason Stokes now around midfield. What's Jason going to do with it? He's going to pat, pass Pat Donnelly. Donnelly now with a long ball in. Oh, not red well inside at all by Garrett. No one will say this one by Garrett. Martin McMahon, who comes out with the ball. Nothing for Audrey Nudwire. Garrett Noon is fighting with the wire to get the ball off him. But he can't do it. It's back to the captain, Hickey. He's on the yellow card. And now it's the fight. Oh, oh, McGuire again. And now it's the Andy Coffin who's flying in towards goal. Number 10, Michael Hogan has a shot. But yet again, an awful way there from. Kilmurray a bricking. The referee is heavy awarded Pat Donnelly. Cut out the missing, maybe a bit of off the wall stuff there, no need for it. Drum Bradford living dangerously here. A lot different game to Nemo Rangers game. Tom McLaughlin is roaring at his boys. Come on, hold on to the ball. Get it in and get a score. We badly need a score here. All the way, must say we're soaking up the pressure very well at the moment. If we continue to do so, maybe the, the heads, maybe the Kilmore breaking heads will drop. Eamon Scholard now. Dropping the ball down on top of maybe who is it? Oh, Barry. Jason Stokes comes again but can't hold on to the ball. And yet again, Kilmore Brickin come away with the ball. And it's in by the captain, but it's straight into Tommy Stack inside. It's very, very easily for Tommy Stack to clear that ball. Gives it outside to Gary Egan. Conway is going out to wing for it, but he's not going far enough. Egan can't give it to me. Egan needs to give it to someone or the referee will blow him up for over carrying the ball, and he doesn't. Now it's to out to Derry McCarthy there on the wing. Derry seems to be pushing the back. The referee says no. And now it's to Gary Egan. Gary Egan, turn around, give it back to Niall Conway. Conway to, Midla to Pat Donnelly. Owen oh, Barry is here on the wing. Oh, believe me, he's roaring for the ball. This is D O'Leary, Solo's a little bit far ahead of him, D, but D pulls it back and gives a long high ball in. Who's inside? Ray Lynch and Gar Noonan. Ain't even going to make it. No, Ray Lynch fights out and gets a hand in that ball. But still, Kim Murray Brick can come out with it. Number 14, Audrey Maguire. That's more like it now from Drum Bradford as the ball goes across the middle of the field to Michael Hogan. And it's been worked all the way up to Maloney. Maloney playing off lot of the ball here. He's after sending a dummy to Niall Conway. Niall Conway still fighting mad for the ball. As Maloney is twisting and turning his way through and he gives it to Michael O'Dwyer, but Michael Lachlan intercepts. That's what we need from our captain, Garrett Noonan, with a big long hand pass into Derry McCarthy. Derry, will you give it back? No, you won't. McLaughlin flying through. And well done, referee gives a free into Tom McLaughlin. That's more like it from Drum Bradford, John. We need to see some more of that. Yes, that was a marvellous interception from Tom McLaughlin and uh, put us back in, 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 into the driving seat. Uh, free, a bit difficult now, maybe a little bit too far out from me already. I think uh, Pat Donnelly might be going to take it, I'm not sure. Pat Donnelly has discarded the gloves in the middle of the field. That was inspirational stuff from Thomas McLaughlin. We need that today for 60 minutes. As Pat Donnelly, yes indeed, Pat Donnelly is taking this one. And it's has been shoved, moved in 10 yards for what I didn't see. As Pat Donnelly, 
attempts to get the first score this Munster final. Pat Donnelly shoots for the post, and yes, that's straight over the black spot. An outstanding score for Pat Donnelly. Vital to get Drum Brawford off the mark here. After they must be the most of 15 minutes gone this, the first half. In a really cold Gaelic grounds. John Bruder is coming off the field. With a bottle of water. I'm sure John is happy to be up a point in no score after 15 minutes having sustained an awful lot of pressure. That really was a good a score that came from Tom McLaughlin's work. As Kilmore are breaking. And Ian McKinry take this kick out. A big long high ball down on top of Stokes. The powerhouse. He gives a punch on it. And oh, he's trying to pick it up. He can't pick it up. But instead it's fallen to the Michael Hogan of Kilmurray Bricken and he gives it into his corner pass to Steve Maloney. Maloney give you a damn spawn now to Declan Callan. Does he know how to do it? He's a corner back. It doesn't make a difference. Peter Rodwyer gives a dangerous ball all the way in. And surely a referee, that's probably the referee give a penalty for that. Seemed to be a high challenge by Tom McLaughlin. The referee is giving a free, he's not giving a penalty. I'm sure this will be a yellow card as well for Thomas McLaughlin. He doesn't get too many of them. The referee is going and talking to his umpire. He's everywhere with his umpire. He's going across the goals now. And he's talking with Thomas McLaughlin. Tom turns around to see the number. It's amazing the referee can read it at all because they're very hard to see them numbers. Thomas will surely receive a yellow card. No, indeed he does in the black, the black book or the public warning, whatever they call it. And surely Audrey Maguire will make it a point of peace here after 17 minutes. And there it is, straight over the bar. He couldn't miss it from here. He did gloves taken off like Pat Donnelly. He's in put back on now as Eamon Scott takes his kick out. That was Tom, Tom McLaughlin off the head to bring down his men there. John was, he, was, he was in for a goal if he didn't. Yes, and, and uh, it could very well have been a penalty. There was very, very little in it. It's indeed, Eamon Scholar now with this kick out. He'll be hoping to drop it down on top of Jason Stokes, as it was for Shawnee Buckley. Two great men in the air. Need is coming, Shawnee's wing, but it won't come as far as Shawnee. It comes as far as Gary Egan, who does very well. Maybe he had a push in the back, but tapped it down to Ombarry, Ombarry, the only area. D. O'Leary coming out of defence, had he a good game the last day, oh my god, he had an outstanding game to Jason Stokes, Jason Stokes, Gary Egan, Gary Egan for a second didn't know what to do with the referee was in the way, D. O'Leary to Owen Barry, now Drum Braff playing good football, Owen Barry takes the belt to the shoulder, Michal Reedy, Reedy cross field ball to Pat Donnelly, McLaughlin is running onto it as fast as he can go, he takes the solo, he lucky, he keeps, that, he keeps position the ball, very lucky, the referee gives a free for over carrying, a very harsh referee with two or three chances who could have done that before. He didn't do it. That was very harsh, I felt, in Thomas McLaughlin. As the captain of Kilmurray, Brick and Shane Hickey was waiting over this free. Gives a shot ball to Horgan. Horgan pops it straight away to into Coughlin. Coughlin a lot of missing game with the ball here, but now there's a long high ball into Mikey Clancy. Mikey Clancy does very well inside. He dropped it, but he recovered outstanding. And now it's with all Barry and Jason Stokes. Jason Stokes and Pat Donnelly, Pat Donnelly and D O'Leary. D is taking too much out of that ball, I feel he should have given them, they're roaring for steps here, as Owen Barry gives a dangerous hand pass across to Jason Stokes. Stokes with long ball up to Garrett, and Garrett really needs to win this ball, and indeed he does fair play to Garrett, and stays inside the line, referee, God, there was no way that ball was out over the line, referee. The referee must think he's in Torwin Park, foot and touch, that was all that was in, was his foot in the whitewash, there was no ball all over the line. But that one, Garrett's head won't drop over that, I guarantee you. As Kilmore Ebrick can take this line ball. Stokes is going for the kill. Uh, he doesn't get it, he puts his head in the sand. Garno, uh, that's nearly a free in Kilmore Ebrick, but the ref doesn't give it. Referee, that's a push in the back on Barry. And Tommy Sta uh, Gary Egan. Egan with the ball to Derry McCarthy. The referee is giving us absolutely nothing here. That could easily be blown for a push in the back again. As on Barry gives it to Pat Donnelly. Pat Donnelly, don't give it shot. Pat, give it across the field. He gives it across indeed to Gary Egan. Gary Egan, we have the sinner inside, Ray Lynch is saying, put the ball here, I'll win it, and indeed he does. Can Ray pop it? Yes, Terry McCarthy, Terry, Shawnee Buckley's inside you. Terry doesn't hold on to the ball, he takes an effort, an outrageous effort, it must be said. And lands inside in the keeper's hand, maybe he missed the opportunity there from Terry McCarthy. Unfortunately, but he's trying his best, even Maloney. 
Kenny Murray breaking yet again coming out with the ball. Referee says, what did you do? You threw the ball. It's a free and good pressure there by Nell Conway. John Kings are looking up maybe a bit. Yes, we have a chance here of another score. A little bit far out though again. Um, almost out to 45, uh, 40 metres out. Um, still haven't come alive. Um, and in fact, uh, some of our lesser lives, Mikey Kensey and, and Owen Barry and uh, Dilly McCarthy are having great games, but uh, well, some of our big hitters will have to come alive if we are to win this game. Michal is standing over the street. I went to well, have a chance. I want to say a big hello to his brother Liam and wife Stephanie outside in San Francisco on Sunshine as Michal takes this free. Will it land between the posts? Yes, indeed it does. The umpire goes for his white flag and it's two points to one to drum colour her bra for after Janice was. 20 minutes, 20 minutes gone here in the Gaelic grounds. Are we 40 minutes from history? I hope we are. The drum Bradford can be joining some great teams that have won this competition. As again, Ian McHenry is taking this kick out. He has a good kick of the ball. And now it's dropping down on top of Shawnee Buckley. Shawnee Buckley making sure he wasn't fouling his men there. And it lands to Michael Hogan. Hogan gives the ball across the middle of the field. Very sloppy done there by the number nine, Paul O'Connor. And Pat Donnelly goes on to pick up this ball. Does well, Pat Donnelly indeed. But it's very, very scrappy. And we neither team can get their hands on the ball at the moment. But now Michael Hogan has it. With Kilmore breaking a dangerous long ball out to Stephen Maloney. Maloney is flying in. Conway gets a hand in. Does very well. Tommy Stack is pushing out the full forward inside. The referee is not giving him free. I thought to be a free out. As it now he gives a free in. Tommy Stack is saying, what in the hell was that for? A free in a dangerous place. Again, a very scorable free from Kilmore Brick in point of view. Referee is heavy over with Tommy Stack. Will he pull out another yellow card here? No, indeed, he doesn't. Kilmore trying to come back to level terms of Drum Bradford here to be their second score of the game from a free again. It's not clear cut, it's clear cut as last on this one. Will they go for the score? And yes, they need a straight between the posts. And the umpire is going for his flag, and it's two points apiece. There isn't much between these teams. I'm sure we're in for a good afternoon here. As Eamon Scholar yet again goes for the kick out the ball. We need to start winning some ball in midfield. Eamon's kick out maybe not the best at the moment, but. Gary Egan is in midfield, he's unmarked. Could Damon Scholar hit him? He won't be unmarked in a minute now because there's a man coming out, a big wedger coming out. So he's in number six and he's back to Mack and Brendan Maloney. The ball drops around. Stokes again does very well to get a hint it. But Tom McLaughlin can't hold on to it. Dean Airy gets a boot it. And it's gone in towards John Daly inside. Daly now with a long crossfield ball towards Mikey Clancy. But well intercepted inside by uh, Niall Conway. Conway and Clancy inside with the ball. Give you dangerous, dangerous, dangerous play inside. Jesus, referee will give a free if you won't get rid of it, Niall. And it's inside the Pat Donnelly. He flicks it up. Watch this. It's outrageous play at the moment. Dio Leary, he's been battled up. Referee will have to give a free in. That's the losing of a game if I ever saw it. That's, that's very, very stupid play, John Eden. The, uh, Kilmurray are breaking out our hunting in packs. And uh, we, we know our hand passing breaks down. There are three, three men on demand. In, and... Uh, and there was no place there for, the, for our, our back man to go. Yes, there comes a time when maybe the ball has to be kicked, and that certainly was one of them. <laughs> Unfortunately, the O'Leary was forced into over carrying the ball. And now Kilmore will break him and surely go into the lead with this their third f score of the game. Yes, indeed, they are his straight out of the and That's a killer blow from John Bradford from Mike Lodwell. Absolute killer blow. Damon Scholar yet again takes this kick out. That's Dwyer's second score of the game. Two of them from Freeze. Jason Stokes is calling for it here in midfield. Jason, I don't think he'll kick it that far. Maybe he will. Shawnee Buckley is coming towards the wing. Maybe Shawnee thinks it's coming down top of him. Yes, indeed, it is landing down top of Shawnee Buckley, but Shawnee doesn't get a hand in it. Oh, and Barry is shoved off the ball there. Here I was Gary Noonan with uh, Shawnee Buckley with the ball. Shawnee, it's Tom McLaughlin. Tom McLaughlin, that's better. That's fast play from Drum Bradford to Gary to Tommy Stack. And that's um, 
Gary Egan, Egan across to Pat Donnelly. What's Pat Donnelly going to do? He gives it back into Gary Egan. Gary Egan pops it to Niall Conway. What can Niall Conway do? Is there anyone inside looking for it? I don't know. Conway, Noonan, Gallant Noonan, back to Conway again. Conway still behind Noonan goals. He gets a belt to be shown. He's thrown over there. It's Michael Hogan with the ball inside. And well defended by Kilmore, breaking him and bringing Maloney. And Gary Noonan tries to stop him in his tracks coming up, but Gary can't do much about it. And they're flying out of the fence again. Maybe over carry this one in this indeed. The number two, Declan Callanan. Carried the ball out over the line. It's a line ball to drum Colour Bradford. To be taken by Shawnee Buckley. The linesman is pushing him back. Shawnee Buckley. Over on Barry. Said to Tom McLaughlin. Maybe he was never supposed to give it to on Barry. McLaughlin. Dangerous ball again to Gary Egan. Back to McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Doing a bit of messing with the ball. He's after being pulled. His jersey is pulled. Referees is freeing. Thomas is looking to give it fast. He gives it in. Who does he give it to? Derry McCarthy. Derry McCarthy. Referee. That's an outrageous challenge. Just another yellow card. Surely that'll be the two halfbacks booked. That's a high tackle there, John. Well, that was Robbie, that'd be a sin meaning, that's a word for certain. Yes, indeed, I think the referee pulled out his second yellow card of the game here. And it'll be in the Coughlin. <laughs> Michal Reedy is standing over this free. Derry McCarthy is getting a bit of, a bit of attention. And indeed, yes, indeed, it is the yellow card for in the Coughlin. That's two half backs now. Kilmore Ibrick must be careful. They're on yellow cards, the two of them. There he is back to his feet and uh, will take more than that to keep down there in the cap yeah. He takes a sup of water. And Michal Reedy is attempting to put Drum Rockford back on level terms here. It's going to be a fair effort from a hole over 45 yards out the field. Shawnee Buckley is standing. Jesus, Shawnee is going to walk over the ball. What are they going to do? Now Shawnee Buckley takes a free across the field to Niall Conway. No one was expecting that. Conway now, what's Conway going to do with it? Will he pop it outside him? No, he won't. He's going across the middle of the field to McLaughlin, the powerhouse at centre back. McLaughlin with a quick long ball into Owen Barry. Owen Barry holds inside. Give it out on. Owen gives it to Derry. Derry gives it to Shawnee. Shawnee, they're defending very, very well, I must say. Derry McCarthy with it around the centre forward line. The referee says you throw the ball. It's going to be a free out. That was very, very stupid there. The referee not missing much here as Pedro Dwyer trying to start another attack, attack for Kilmore. You're breaking Michael Hogan. Ray Lynch is racing back there and the ball is given in into Adrian O'Doyer. He's been tightly marshaled inside and it's out to Dennis Callanan. Another long ball in towards number 15 inside, Noel Downs. He turns Mikey Clancy, he's bearing down and going. This will surely be over the bar. No, it's left and wide unfortunately for Kim Murray and Brickin. Another missed opportunity there. But from Bradford, John need to, need to take advantage of their, of their chances. Well, the chances are few and far between, but Kilmore Brickin would want to take their chances. And uh, like it there last Sunday, uh, it, it, there's every chance that Drumcolor Bradford will be still in the game at half time and, and very lucky to be in the game the way they're playing at the moment. Yes, the Kilmore Brickin physio comes onto the field, giving some attention. I think it might be to Paul O'Connor, big midfielder. Yeah, when Scholar waiting to take this kick out. He won't be taking it for a minute because Paul O'Connor is getting some treatment. There's a bit of concern over him. The massive blow to kill Murray Bricking if Paul O'Connor had to be taken off at this stage of the game. It must be almost half time, John. Or very close to it at least. 27 minutes gone, John Neenan tells me. As O'Connor is back in his feet and I mean, Scholar is taking this kick out. Who's he going to target this time? Maybe down on top of Jason Stokes again. All there's a few lucky Murray breaking in over there. Jason Stokes is shouldering his men off of the ball. And that's outstanding by Pat Donnelly. Does very well to hold the ball there. Todd referee should have given him maybe the rub of the green there. After winning the ball, Pat Donnelly is going for some afters. No, he isn't. As Kim Murray breaking give yet another long ball in top of Mikey Clancy. Mikey Clancy tries to get a hint. He doesn't. Tommy Stack gets it. Tommy Stack is pushed out and he sends a face. Mike Lachlan is here. Dangerous ball. Eamon Scollard. Eamon Scollard goes down. Referee gives us a free out. Maybe we're lucky to get that one there. Aim went down at the right time. Tommy Stack taking this ball low. Across to Tom McLaughlin. McLaughlin coming out the field with the ball. John Daly is after him. McLaughlin is saying, not a hope. As it's Shawnee Buckley, does the dummy. Gary Egan, Gary Egan, Jason Stokes. Back to Gary Egan. Gary Egan across to Tom McLaughlin. 
Tom McLaughlin always kicking long ball. Referee, that's a scandalous shot. And Tom McLaughlin is down his hands and face. The referee gives a free in. That should be in yellow, yellow card without a shadow of it open. Referee doesn't give it. Referee, that's a push in the back again. Referee says, no way, that's off the ground by me already for the second time. No, he's going heavy. The referee doesn't know what he's doing at the moment. There was another free there, but he's not giving it. No, he's moving up the ball 10 yards because of this in from the hall read As Dennis Callan takes this line ball in the middle of the field, it's been won by Drum Bradford. Referee again, in again with more outrageous bloody free again to kill Maria Bricken. That's Kilmore Rick can take this free. Referee who can't give a free for that anyway, God bless it. And it's the Michal really does well to get it to Shawnee Buckley. Shawnee Buckley, can you let it in? There's no point, Shawnee, of course, because there's no one inside. Ray Lynch is all alone inside with three three defenders. That's a oh, long ball across the field, but it's intercepted by number 10 from Michael Hogan from Kilmore Brick in this dangerous play by Drum Bradford. And now Kilmore Brick in a building another attack. Up to towards John uh, up towards the full forward or Audrey Maguire. Dean Airy marking him tightly. Now it's gone into the Mike Lodwire inside. Lodwire has been. Jeez, McLaughlin, you better be careful, Thomas. I thought that was a free there, but referee didn't give it. Michael Hogan now with the ball. What will he do? Will he try to keep from there? He has room now. Oh, Barry, you need to get down. Tight referee. Yes, very well done. But Garnon and get a tort at Gar. Get a boot at Gar. Garnon and goes down on top of it. Fair play to you, Garrett. And give it to Jason Stokes. Jason Stokes. Give it to Owen. Give it. Or, no, he won't. He's going on. He's on the ball. Bounces away from him. Is he going to give a long ball in? Jeez, that's a disaster of a ball. In towards Ray Lynch. Ray fighting man for the ball. Ray indeed wins it. Can he pop it outside? What can he do? He gives it to Jason Stock. There he's in the center. Within 30 yards of the Kilmore breaking goals. What are we going to do with the ball? I do not know. Michal, really, you're not going to kick it from outside there, like. Michal is trying to move close to the goals. No, he works a great opportunity to Derry McCarthy. Derry McCarthy sells the dummy. Derry put it over the bloody bar. He tries it. Yes, that's all about a great score from Derry McCarthy. Well worked by Michal Reedy there. Carl Noonan fought hard. That's the more like it from Drum for John. Yes, that's the first, first score we've got from play today. And it was a magnificent point from Derry McCarthy. Derry is one of the better players here this afternoon. Yes, indeed, Derry got a great score the last day. A vital score against Nemo Rangers. And that indeed was another vital one there. It put us in on level terms, I'm sure. Referee, there can't be much left, John. I'd say only maybe... Maybe the referee is thinking about blowing, blowing his whistle now. Injury time is being played. As, again, Conway goes up for that ball, but doesn't win it cleanly. We're winning no ball cleanly, but neither are Kilmory Bricken as McLaughlin goes across for this. Can't get there, Thomas. It's, it's the full foul of Kilmory Bricken, Audrey Nordwire. Nordwire is doing a lot of messing with it. He's being hassled by Drum Braffer, by Dio Leary, and Tom McLaughlin as the ball goes across. Dangerous ball all the way across to number 12, Stephen Maloney. Maloney gives it back out to the captain, Shane Hickey. Hickey now across the middle of the field to the man that was down injured a few minutes ago. Derry, McC Derry gets a tackle on him. Referee, that's over, carrying the ball, but referee says, no way, he's not giving us anything today. Mike Lodwell with the ball. This would be great to, 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 to prevent him from getting a score here, to be outstanding. Audrey Maguire, heavy and outrageous effort. Look at that, that's going to land below on Tom Parker, I swear, my God. But lost, blocked inside by the Kilmore and Bricken boys, and that's it. The half-time whistle goes, and it's three points apiece. A lot of good frantic game here, Drum Brawford. There's a big crowd below me, they're cheering on, both teams are being cheered on. But John, we're looking to be on level terms. Great excitement for the teams as they go into their dressing rooms. Uh, but to be honest, it was a dour first half. Um, the major man, in, in my opinion, during that first half was the referee, and uh, he gave it 75 25 to Kilbury Abrikin. Very harsh and drum color brought for the times. <coughs> it's, it's very, very hard to call it at this point in time. One thing is noticeable the, the, the unlike Nemo Rangers, Gary Egan playing as a seventh back, uh, the Kilmurray Brickin uh, back uh, did not follow him. And uh, as a result, Ray Lynch is being marked by two men, and uh, uh, it's very hard to see scores coming for Drum Colour Bradford. Um, maybe we'll ha we'll have to go back and put in three full forwards. I, I don't know, but uh, we'll go for the old Copitino here in this in the in in in, in the, cr the crowded area here.
drum colour brought for team are back out on the field as we wait. The emergence of Kilmurray of Brecon, and here they come. From a drum colour Bradford point of view, we wonder what the Ned English say to the drum colour Bradford team during the interval. I'm quite sure that they weren't having tea and cake. And indeed, John Brother, a fine orator, I'm quite sure he's talking to them. And the way the game has gone in this first half, they're quite entitled to get a bit, a, a bit of an eating. And everything now, 2.49 in, in readiness for the start. And we would hope for a better performance from the referee in the second half. And he held up the play and awarded freeze for very, very neat, neatly little things that could have been left for. Eamon Scholard in the balls waiting. Eamon would have fine game this first half. Yes, indeed, from Bradford win destroying here with Pat Donnelly in the middle of the field with the ball. He's giving it back again towards his own goal with Tom McLaughlin. McLaughlin give you a long ball in towards Gar Noonan. Gar Noonan can't keep his feet, finding it very hard to keep his feet today. What can he, but he does very, very well, Garrett, get the ball. He had to drop it, Doc, he'll be done for over carrying. Jesus, Jason, you really picked that off the ground. Jason giving a long ball in towards Lynch. Ray Lynch does very well. Referee, that's a push in the back if I ever saw one. And another foul down top of it. Referee says, I don't want to know about it. I'm not giving in nothing. He gives a free out, Doc. Ray Lynch is thrown away. He's told, get out of there. Kilmore, you're breaking building attack. Now with Declan Callanan. Coming up the middle of the field. Pops the shot past to Peter O'Dwyer. Dwyer can't hold on to it. Drops the ball. He's being hassled by Shawnee Buckley and Jason Stokes. Turns back. He can't give it to anyone. Jason's running him into the corner. Jason's doing very, very well indeed. Referee, what about over carrying the arrow? Referee again gives a free to Kilmore Brick. And this referee is all over. Drum Bradford, he's giving him absolutely nothing. Everything is for Kilmore Brick. And as the long ball goes up towards Tom McLaughlin. McLaughlin gets another free against Thomas McLaughlin given. This referee, he says he's from Kerry. I don't know if he's from Kerry. Is he from Clare? Is he from Quilty? God only knows. Maybe his mother is from. From clear. Owen Barry with the ball, pops it back to Tommy Stack. We don't care if they're two referees, we don't care who, who the referee is for. Once we can beat these boys, Tommy Glockton to Jason Stokes. Jason, a bit of messing with the ball, Jason. Let it go, will you? To the O'Leary. Leary. Tommy Glockton. McLaughlin. No, he's the only man that's inclined to kick the ball in. Kicks it into Ray Lynch. Ray Lynch does very well to stay on his feet there. Maybe he got a push in the back. He didn't go long because he said he wouldn't get a free for the feet. Uh, the O'Leary. The O'Leary not used to playing that far up the field. The O'Leary is coming backwards, backwards, backwards with the ball. He gives it across to Pat Donnelly. Pat Donnelly now. Where's he going with it? He doesn't know where he's going with it. That's an effort from outside there. Pat, that's no good, I'm afraid. Drops into the keeper's hands inside. It's a sin to drop the ball into the keeper's hands like that. But again, clear or, or Kilmore are breaking the clear or building in another attack. Derry McCarthy is on the heels of the number seven in the Cochran. And oh, Tommy Stack does outstandingly well there. Get onto that ball, but the ball is shipped up into the hands of John Daly. Daly giving a long ball into inside to the front the corner forward Downs Downs he's being hassled by Mikey Clancy he kicks the ball that'll be a great score if it goes over no it doesn't Eamon Scotland tries to catch it can't hold on to the ball goes over for a 45 I'd say the first 45 of the game with more pressure there John from, from Kilmore breaking straight after the straight from the throw in very much so again and, and uh, putting him in a chance with the score um, I don't know I'm not really happy at all with Colour Bradford we are very very bare up, up front at, at the moment Yes, indeed, and the referee has a serious issue with us at the moment. I think he wouldn't give us... He's not giving us a sniff of it. Johnny Bruder need English below me. I don't want to be panicking yet. All the need is having a peep at the watch. Mike Quaid and Mike Fahey with him. I didn't see it in the slot here. Where he must be at the far side of the field. Maybe he is with Jim Barry. Kevin O'Donnell. Morris McCarthy. As in the Cochran goes to take this free, he'll want a fair belt of a ball from there, but he doesn't get it. Tommy Stack pulls it out of the clouds inside, and very well held by Tommy Stack, and referee eventually gives us a free out for what they are, God only knows. And it's with Dio Leary. We need to build here and build fast. Dio Leary has been pulled, and he's referee gives a free fair play at him. He's giving us an awful lot now, all of a sudden. Now Conway is trying to get away from his men to make a run up the field. He's a good man to score a point. He's pointing back, he's saying give it back to Mikey Clancy. Instead it goes up to Reedy. Referee, he's all over him. He pulled the shot off him. Referee is giving nothing. That's, a, that's absolutely scandalous. Zidane wouldn't... To, the last time that was seen was when they tried to take the shot off of Zidane in the World Cup. He tried to pull the shot off of Michal Reedy there. That has to be a, a booking... 
Referee is waiting for him to get to his knees. He'll have to give me a look out for that, I believe. He's asking his, him his name. He can't, uh, another black book. He can't tell him his name because he's on his knees. If there was ever a yellow card to be given, that had to be one. Hard to see from here, but I believe that's on Barry standing over that ball. McLaughlin is on his own, back in the centre back line. He won't get it. Dio Leary gets it instead. Leary no might give it to McLaughlin. No, he pops it shot to Donnelly. Donnelly pops it back to Gary Egan. Egan give it up to Owen again. Owen gets the ball up. No, he's closing down. He's 45 yards from goal. What can he do with it? He pops it in. Jesus, very tight now into, into Gary Egan. Gary Egan, the Shawnee Buckley who needs to get into this game. Shawnee Buckley has an effort from 40 yards out the field. Will it be over the ball? Yes, indeed. The score of the game from the man from knock two. Shawnee Buckley. Outstanding of us. Yes, sir. No, Shani might go on like the last day and score three points. That was a brilliant point from Shani Buckley. That should do his confidence. No in the good at all. An outstanding effort there from Shani Buckley. He's having an outst mighty year, Shani is. Yeah, Miskolo takes the with exactly five minutes gone in the game. Jason Stokes again breaks the ball down midfield. He's catching nothing clean, Jason, but by God, is he breaking ball. Lynch Union, he touched it in the ground, but he didn't know it's Kilmurray breaking and Stephen Maloney trying to get up the ball. But they can't solve him into their cornerback, Callan. What's he going to do with Jerry McCarthy? Won't let him out too easy. I know that for a fact. Michal Reed Egan put him under great pressure inside. And eventually, he got a big, long ball across the field. Oh, and Barry is over there. I can all Barry win it. No, he can't. He's on after falling down. He gets back up again. Michael Hogan himself, heavy, a good tussle over there. And now it's with Hickey, the captain. And now it's the midfielder man that was down injured. Paul O'Connor, he gives a straight in, but it's all the way into Tommy Stack. Can Tommy Stack? He's been pulled off the ball, referee. Absolutely outrageous. A referee again says nothing. Referee, if you can't see that, you have much business refereeing. A Munster final, I'll tell you that much for nothing. You won't ever see Croke Park, I'd say. And here comes Dio Leary coming out with the ball. Leary is twisting, turning D, get it out for God's sake. If the Banshee Rovers were still going, he'd be eligible to play for him. As Mikey Clancy is coming out with the ball now, he gives it to Buckley. Buckley shrugs off the tackle but turns around. Jason Stokes gets the ball and he throws off the shoulder. He says, get out of my way. Can he pop it to McLaughlin? McLaughlin, no, he's going to give a long ball and I know where he is. And yes, indeed, inside to Garrett Noonan. Garrett needs to get a ball over the bar, get his confidence up at the moment. He's very low down. Garrett, he shot, drops the ball but he picks it up again. Gives it across Derry McCarthy. Derry, have you two legs? Have you one leg? I don't know. Jeez, that's a wide bar from Jerry McCarthy. A disaster of a chance from John Bradford. Missed opportunity. John Nina, we need to be taking him chance if we're going to win this game. Yes, that was a great chance, all right, but he, he rushed it a small bit. Uh, that's our first uh, wide ball. Jerry McCarthy really rushed that. He was under pressure. That would have been a great score for John Bradford. Could have put us five points to three up, but it didn't, so there's no point in talking about it. We're up four points to three. As Kilmore are breaking the knee, McInnery takes this kick out. Lendy again in the middle of the field, but drove from Barfield and created his hands. But eventually, as just as I said it, Mihal really got his hands, pops it inside. Oh, Barry. Oh, Barry, he's been hassled very badly. Gary Nolan, Gary Nolan can't hold it until he tries to punch it. The referee could have blown him for over carrying there, I could say that. Oh, Barry, effort blocked down again, another disaster. There's a man here beside Mihal that he said, he says, You're throwing it away, lads. As Drum Bra for give away a stupid free there, that was a missed opportunity. John Neenan, very bad up. That was a goal chance of Derry McCarthy, really just standing there all on his own uh, to put it into the back of the net. But uh, I, I sense that is a good bit of an improvement in the Drunkard of Bradford team. And this is. We, 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 we are in, into the 37 minute, and this is the first time that I'm saying I can see an improvement coming in this team. If we don't take them chances, the Mike Lock on our cup won't be resting in Noctosh tonight. They say it will be above in West Clare. But here Kilmore Brick can build yet another attack, but I'm sure we'll do our best to bring that cup to Noctosh and bring it to Bradford, drum colour for Bradford. As here we have midfield, Beat Rodwire gives it back to number seven in the Cockland. Cockland, they're doing a lot of messing out themselves. That's surely an elbow range, but the referee yet again says no way. A boy Stokes, Jason Stokes pulls it out of the clothes again. Pops it, he's having an outstanding game, fair play to him. To Gary Egan, Gary Egan, to Dez back to Gary Egan. Gary, Jesus, you're over carrying the ball. No, he gives a cute ball over to Niall Conway. What can Conway do with it? These boys are nervous, they can't tell you hold on to the ball. In towards Ga Gary Egan. Gary is going straight for the corner flag. Gary, come out of there, will you? What's he going to do? He gives it out to Ray, Ray Lynch. Ray Lynch all the way across the field. Watch on Barry across the field, look at him. Pat Donnelly can't hear me. This Mihal Reedy, no, we're, we're coming backwards, we're coming backwards. There's a good ball across the field for Mihal Reedy. It's a super Mac McLaughlin, the man from Noctoosh. He's having no sending game at a minute and a half time. He said, did that man ever play a bad match? 
Watch him. He'll fight for everything. He gets the ball. Lucky is supposed to get it as far as Shawnee Buckley. Shawnee Buckley out to Jason Stokes. Jason Stokes, the power host in midfield. Stokes is shrugging off the tackle. Gives Gallon. Gallon, put it over the power. Gallon has an effort. No, into the keeper's hands again. That's a sin. God almighty, how many times have we done that? That's an absolute disaster. Kim Murray Bricken building yet another attack. And we're drummed off their make him build from the back. They're coming out every big man. Brendan Maloney is centre back. They're coming up the middle of the field now. Drum Braffer will rule and miss chances yet, I know it. As Gary Nolan could have, Gary Egan could have went for the kill there, but he didn't. He stood back. Conway is going for that. Gary Egan, referee! That's over carrying the ball and referee gives a free to Kilmore a Bricken. That's an absolute disgraceful disgrace. That referee, he's from Kerry. He's giving absolutely nothing to Limerick. And to Drum Braffer. That's an absolutely scandalous decision. A Kilmore Bricken build again. God, and I'd like to see his rating in the paper tomorrow. The referee, I'd say to him, be anything bigger than 2 or 3 out of 10 anyway. I wouldn't be giving him anything out of 10 if I had a chance. As Ken Murray and Brick and try to get a ball in. Jeez, that forwards are playing very poor. Tommy Stack is pushing it back. Referee says, I don't want to know about it. Out now to the full forward, O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer has an effort from long, far out the field. If that goes over, no, indeed, it doesn't. There's a wide ball. Thanks be to God. Another let off for John Bradford. Johnny, this referee is doing us no favours. Yeah, yeah, certainly. You said about his mother maybe being from from uh, from Clare. I'd say he's holiding a lot in Spanish points of Le Hinch. Well, there's someone from some place anyway, because he, he's a serious problem with John Conor Bradford. We must have insulted him in the past. I don't think John Bradford ever done anything to carry. Out of the way, it's a long time since they ever beat him. Maybe in the league match here on the Gaelic Grounds seven or eight years ago, all right. Eamon Scholar taking his kick out now. I must check my watch, I suppose. There's What's gone? There's exactly 10 minutes and 42 seconds gone as McLaughlin has the ball. Jesus, Tom, will you let it off and don't be messing with it? Dio O'Leary, or Gary Egan picks it up. It's very hard to distinguish who between them here. McLaughlin again. McLaughlin, let it in, Tom. Let it in, Tom. No, Tom doesn't. Tom is... Hmm. Tom gives it back now again to Gary Egan. Gary Egan across the middle of the field to Pat Donnelly. Come on, Pat Donnelly. We're 20 minutes from history. It will be outstanding. Mikey Clancy, I saw his pitch on the start during the week. He's pulled down. Clancy, let him alone. Don't go near him. And indeed, he doesn't work better, Mikey Clancy. Great discipline. Great player, great tryer. Donnelly, all the way into it, make it as far as Lynch. Oh, yes, it will, because the big wedge on missed it inside. Ray Lynch is pulled to the ground. Referee. That's it. Up. Referee is giving us nothing. He gave us a free day. But that must be a yellow card. Certainly, that was vintage Lynch. I'm, I'm waiting for the last three matches for to see something like that from him. And... Now the substitute now, Nickel Murray breaking him, but going back to, 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 to Ray Lynch, that was vintage Lynch, smashing football from him. Coming off his Noel Downs, the number 15 for Kill Murray and Bricken. I can't yet see who's coming on. He's getting his shake hands below, I presume it's from his manager. The management team is Michael McDermott, M Martin Keevney and John McCarthy. I wonder if the John McCarthy of Cork is he there with him? As Pat Donnelly takes this free, this will be a vital free for Pat Donnelly, his brother Anthony outside in Norway. Doing a bit of plumbing. He'll be on the panel today, I'm sure, not far from the team if he was here. The recession is after hitting hard, this after driving him to, to Norway. Pat Donnelly, his brother, taking this one. Will Pat Donnelly, yes indeed, I swear he will, he puts it over the black spot. And Drum Braffer take a two-point lead. Five points to three, maybe we've him rattle now. If the referee can keep his head about him now and done, doesn't do anything outrageous against us. It'll be a historic day for Drum Bra for GA, for Limerick GA. As I said, only one Limerick team to ever win it before that was Tolman College in 77 with Pat Spillane, manager. Blood sub there for Kilmore, a brick in number 18. Darren Hickey. He's in on Derry McCarthy. As McHenry takes his kick out, he's a great boot for ball. I'll give him that much. Lens around Shawnee Buckley and Tat Donnelly, but they can't win it. Instead, it's Kilmore a bricking. And Jeez on Barry dives in there on. And well done by Pat Donnelly. Gets a hand to that ball and he stops the attack right. Number nine, Paul O'Connor. Will he take this line ball? Pat Donnelly does very well there to be fair to him to stop the attack. I can see Jim Barry over there on the far side of the field. That's the captain that was going to have for Kilmore, a brick in number five, Shane Hickey, but I think it was only a blood sub, John, was it all? Though? 
It's on Braff for him, McLaughlin, look at that, Re a Reedy rather picks up the ball with a beautiful flick, it was like the flick that McLaughlin would do, that's why he thought it was Tom McLaughlin. A Shawnee Buckley now, he'll never have a shot from out there, Shawnee you're too far out the field, he's twisting, turning, no one around him, no there's Owen Barry. Michal Reedy, no point in throwing it away from here lads. Ray Lynch in towards Lynch inside the corner, he'll be well marshal inside, he can't get a hold of half his men Lynch. Jesus, Reedy has an effort from way, way, way out the field and it's landing into the keeper's hands. And now again, Kilmurray breaking up building here. Derry McCarthy fighting for absolutely everything today. It's one of Derry's better games. Look at that. That's great heart by Derry McCarthy. Referee, another soft free. As Kilmurray breaking kick this ball out over the line. Yes, indeed, it does go over the line. That's a heartbreaker for Kilmurray breaking. John O'Day losing their composure a bit. Yes, um, that, that, that reminds me of the day that Drunkola Bradford beat Bailey Anderson in the, the county final and uh, Bailey Landers lost the head of small bit at the end. Uh, they, are, they are getting frustrated. They are not, be, they're not able to come outside the centre field now and get, in, get the ball up to the forwards. Um, a little bit of frustration com, com, coming on. 2004, Kilmore Brick won the Munster Championship. They beat they beat Stradbury of Waterford and Torres and they drew nine points apiece. They won the final the replay by a point in Kilmallock. Nine points to eight. They're hoping to become to win it for a second time here today. It's a great achievement to win it once. Blood Sub is coming back off again now. Number 18, did I say the command there? He's coming back off as Pat Donnelly takes this ball. GC kick one out over the line here at the last day. Don't see this one is going for the same place. It'll be an absolute disaster. Ray Lynch attempts to keep it in. He does indeed. He does very well to keep it in. But Kilmore, you can get their hands in with Paul O'Connor. And they're trying to come out with it. But referee, yes, again gives a free against Strum Bradford and Garrett Noonan. Garrett does no point in arguing it because he will get absolutely nothing off of this man. As Kilmore, you can come out again hunting in packs. God, how many attacks today? Came out, start to hand pass out. They're on. They're on. Full back line. Here they are in midfield now, they're doing a lot of messing with it. Can we take it off them to be vital to take it off them there? No, we can't. Can't make it up, get up and keep fighting for it. Number 18, the woman on the loudspeaker told me she was that's been taken off, but he's still in the field and I hope they haven't 16 in the field. They've won men anyway. Number 14, Old Maguire. Old Maguire, that's a very poor ball in. Well defended by Tommy Stack inside. He hasn't given Daly a sniff, and I must keep my head out of the way of the camera. It's hard for us all to see here. As indeed, McLaughlin, the powerhouse, wins it inside. Can he give it to Derry McCarthy? Derry York McCarthy, there was a nice piece about his grandfather in the paper. And in the, in the, in the programme the last day, Derry wins a free. The man from Church Street and Drumcaller, they said there was only one street in Drumcaller. Right, it will be, it'll be burnt tonight. There'll be no street there tomorrow, maybe Jason Stokes. Jason is having an outstanding game today. He's after playing after the ball in midfield. Fair play to him. He's a great trier. Niall Conway with him. <laughs> Referee is heavy award here now with Paul O'Connor. Probably a third yellow card for the for the Kilmore Bricken boys. Yes indeed it is. It's about the time referee gives some gives something. He say, come on, come on, hurry up with it. Jason gives it a Jesus across the Thomas McLaughlin. McLaughlin, will you watch yourself? What's McLaughlin going to do with it? To be a disaster to mess it up. 17 minutes and 50, 15 seconds. Gone in the second half as Mikey Clancy gets it up the field to Garrett Noonan. Garrett, Jesus, Garrett can't onto the ball all today. And it's given in now inside. But unfortunately, Drum Bradford Mink can't get their hands in. It's been bought out the field by Maloney. Maloney is a bit of a speed merchant. Con uh, Reedy says, run into that. Slow down there. You can't go any further than me. And now another man is playing out the ball, Kenlin. And the captain, Hickey. They're running like headless chickens at the moment. Oh, Jesus, Garrett, Tom, keep the hand out of there. Could have been pulled for a high tackle there. Oh, Stokes goes for the cruncher. And he puts that man to his knees in the middle of the field. And the Kilmurray Brick can continue on and put the ball over the bar. There was a bad squad can see from Kilmurray Brick and Stokes doing a brassy on that one there. There'll be a fella looking for him. Holy Ant himself for a while after that, John Neenan. But we conceded a soft score straight away after that. Yeah, soft score and uh, Jason will be getting the yellow card here. I think this um, Kilmurray Brickin player will remember Jason. He'll be fairly sort uh, tomorrow. It's indeed the boys beside us, the RT boys are bailing out. I'd say they must be going to the sideline for. Uh, they could be like the Limerick boys in '96. They could be going down too early. They, they, we, we could be beat by the time you get, by the time you get down below. Let's hopefully not. We might see in Croke Park. Who knows? God is good. We must win here today, and we're first as the ball lands in midfield. And again, Kilmurray Brickin win it. 
And we're doing, we're not doing much in midfield at the moment. The full forward, Odwyer gives the ball to the centre back. He's a big wedge referee. And the number two, who's been all over the place today, has an outstanding game. Canlon gives it inside to the sub that came on. Uh, he's Matt McCarthy. But look at that. Look who brings it out. Mike Lachlan. His father played holding with Mealing. He won the Hollow Medals with him. As did Johnny Buckley's father, Donny. As Michal really races for this ball. And who's marking it? Only the full forward, Odwyer. But he gets it out to Garrett Nolan. Come on, Garrett, come on. Garrett trying to get the ball in. He's nearly over carrying it even. Referee isn't giving it thing. We'll see as the boys are going away. As now number 10 and Michael Hogan has the ball. Gives it his centre back. Chips it across the field to Paul O'Connor. Paul O'Connor looks to be tired, but he's continuing. He's still fighting. Darren Hickey. And it's bent of his shoulder there and he loses the ball. But can Murray break and still have it now? And number 13, Michael O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer is going towards the 21, he's been held back out by the O'Leary. Jeez, the referee gives a free in to kill Moria Bricken. That was a foul there from here, who can I see, who was it? It wasn't the O'Leary. Maybe Shawnee Buckley over there. John Bruder is walking out onto the field. Must be very nervous now. We've exactly 10 minutes left in the game. To be an outrageous effort to put the ball over the bar from here. Maybe he's going to have a crack in it to be an inspirational score. To bring Kilmory Bricken back in level terms. They're five points to four at the moment. This would make it five points apiece. He has a, l a shot at it, but a very, very poor effort. Now Conway can't hold it inside. Instead, it falls to Kilmory Bricken, man. And they're trying to pop it outside to make a bit of room. The captain, Hickey, trying to have an effort from way out the field. That's kicked wide ball. Johnny, and we want to stand this pressure. Yes, uh, Duncan and Bradford are playing very, very deep now. They're all gone down into one half of the field. And, uh, you know, we need a score. We can never, we can't sustain that pressure all the time. And uh, I, I'd like to see the half hour and getting back, back up in, in, into the, into their correct positions. Yes, indeed, we could be, um, sorry, after a few misses we had earlier on in the game, referee says, come on, bring it on, Eamon Scholar. He said, no, no time wasting. Evan Scholar gets a good boot to this ball, it's landing around midfield, look at that, Shawnee Buckley soars up into the sky, he brings it down, he gives it to McLaughlin, he's next door neighbour above in Noctouche, McLaughlin, jeez, McLaughlin took a bit of much out of it, but he gives it to Jason Stokes, Jason Stokes back to Thomas, Thomas McLaughlin, he has a long ball in towards the rail inch inside, Rain, ref, he's all over him, the referee's in his grace, he said no, I don't want to know about it, absolutely disgraceful decision again from the referee, as Kilmore are breaking up, building an attack, this referee wants to be running out of the Gaelic grounds fairly fast after the matches from Bradford have beaten it, not much of nothing because he's been an absolute disgrace here today. Now Kilmore are breaking again, building an attack with a full forward, Garnoon is bearing down top of him, trying to get the ball off him. They kick ball under pressure, in towards John Daly, John Daly shots off Tommy Stack, Daly gets the ball again to the referee to give a free here, if Daly goes down, no he doesn't, he gives a free out. John Daly over carrying, John Daly's on his feet, Tommy Stack didn't hit you Daly, get up off, get up. Tommy Stack isn't the dirty player. All of a sudden he's a bit like Ronaldo, he's alright again. 22 minutes, 15 seconds gone, 8 minutes from history. It's an awful, awful, awful long way away yet. Kilmore Ebrick and have another man warm me up down below me here now. I presume he's a forward, it's going to come in. Referee heavy over with me, Hall Reedy. We all will probably get a yellow card. Yes, indeed, he does. Will it be a historic day for Drumbra, for G, and for everyone involved? Oh my God, Almighty, that's the most disgraceful ball from Gary Egan to the substitute with the number 17 on his back. He has an effort. That's a wide ball. John Neenan, yet another let off for Drumbra. Yes, indeed, Tom. I wonder what they're thinking about at all. Eamon Scholar getting ready to take that next kick out again. And they're slowing it down. One point, very slender lead on this big day for us here in Limerick. Yes, indeed, a big break or hearts to be beaten here today. The last time we played, we were beaten by a point. We were 13, beaten by 13 points to 12 here on the Gaelic grounds. John Daly got the winning score the same day. Not John Dingle Daly, no, but John Daly from Kilmory Bricken got the winning score of free and injury time. That was in 2004. They went on to win the Munster title. 
Can we win the Munster title today? Revenge is sweet. I said it. Revenge is sweet. Mikey Clancy. They're all going for the kill. Clancy is like a terrier. He won't take it off me. He said, that's off the ground. Yes, Mike Quaid, you called it right. Referee says, that's off the ground, lads. Mikey Clancy holding the back of his pole. A great warrior, Mikey Clancy. Jimmy Lacey's going with water. Clancy doesn't want any water. Just far from water. He'll be drinking for a week if they'll win this. With Shawnee Buckley now around the middle of the field. Shawnee, that was a tug on Shawnee's jersey, but the referee yet again says, I am giving you nothing, boys. Shawnee will get creased here. No, he won't. What beautiful work by Shawnee Buckley. Referee, the man touched that in the ground, but the referee says, yet again, I am giving you nothing, boys. Shawnee, you need to give it out now. Gives it across the Nile. Or not to Derry McCarthy. Derry McCarthy all the way across the field to Jason Stokes. Oh, and Barry is roaring for it. Jesus, Jason, will you let it after him? No, it gets to be hard, really. Very lucky to get there. Oh, and Barry is trying to stay in his feet. Nerves, I'd say, are unbelievable here. Gary Egan. Barely no goal. Egan has an effort. Oh, held inside by the goalkeeper. Ray Lynch is trying to take the ball off him and gone weak. And the goalkeeper takes a quick free inside. Coming out the field again with Drum Bradford. But Drum Bradford robbing me hard, really. Yes! That's a free in. Now we can hear the Drum Bradford crowd, Johnny Egan, below us. They're roaring. They believe we can do something here. Yes, it's a very scorable opportunity. Maybe, maybe a little bit far out, but we should be able to get a point out of this and we'll cool down the game for a few more minutes. We have a drum colour Bradford substitution. I think John Kelly is coming on. You'll know more about that, Tom. Yes, I can see um, Tom. Is it, it's very hard to see from here. Hitting Tom McLaughlin. Michal Reedy, I think, is down holding his head. Michal has had a very good game. I think all the drum Bradford players have had a good game. They're all fighting very hard. We are exactly 25 minutes into the game. 25 and a half minutes into the second half, rather. Johnny Kelly is waiting to come on the great servant as well, Johnny. And then from Farry here. I wonder who will make way for him. Mike Fahey is having a word with Johnny. Michal Reedy really trying to put this ball over the bar. This will be inspirational. This could be a winner. This could be the most important kick Michal Reedy really has ever kicked in his, in his career. I hope, for everyone's sake, this ball goes over the bar. Michal is a great servant to Drum Bradford and Limerick G over the years. Oh, one Michal, he gives it one touch of the right leg and look where it goes. It goes over the black spot. Outstanding. Reedy is having a great game today, fair play to him. Johnny Kelly is coming on the field. As I said, a great servant, Johnny Kelly is. Who's making way, maybe? Garrett Noon, I think, is making way for him. Garrett as well, having outstanding player, Garrett. Played his part in it in no small way. Massive commitment to John Bradford, G.A. Garrett and his father, Gary. John Brodo putting a hand around him. Nate English shakes hands with him. Good man, Garrett, you give it everything, by. As the ball is landing, they're in the man on Buckley, but Buckley still can't hold onto the ball. But Gary Egan can. Gary Egan, who does he give it to? Johnny Kelly. Kelly, let it in fast. Jesus, Kelly, you're in the stalks, but he didn't. McLaughlin, out to John Kelly. Oh, John Kelly can't hold on to the bloody ball. He's trying, for, he's trying very hard, John Kelly, fair play to him, John. Jason, Jesus, Jason, you're pushing the back there. You can't do that, Jason. I don't know, can I hand much more of this? 27 minutes and 20 seconds gone. Let's kill Murray a brick and try to build another attack. D, 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 don't. D give a tug on the jersey there and referee puts back the ball. Will he give D a look out? No, he won't. D O'Leary, a great player. D, I'm sure he'll be wearing the green of Limerick this year in the Munster Championship. But they won't go. You need the likes of D O'Leary and him boys in your team if you're going to win any Munster Championship. I'm sure Mickey Nate will be having a look at the likes of D and a few more young players in the Drum Bradford team. Oh, and Barry and Terry McCarthy. Tommy Sack maybe coming back again. D now gives the ball back to Tom McLaughlin. Oh, mother of God, this is dangerous player. Tom McLaughlin. Deadly turn the foot across from McLaughlin. Where did he bring his pace from? God only knows. Maybe his father Patsy or his mother Margaret. I don't know. No, it's across to Johnny Kelly. Johnny Kelly. Oh, Jason Stokes can't hold on to the ball, but he gives it out to Dio Leary. Gets a belt of a shoulder into the chest. The referee says, John is the referee softening out. Is he after tying a bit? Yes, maybe tying a bit. And uh, Kelly Murray breaking over, getting frustrated. But still, he has given 75 25 to kill Murray breaking all the time. I'm still afraid this referee is going to screw us, John. I have an awful bad feeling about him. I hope I'm wrong. 
If we get a point here, maybe it was curtains for everyone. Reedy have an effort, Michal. Ah, he's pushed off the ball. The referee says, get up and not give you any free for it. I can more break in again, building here. Jason is all over him. That has to be a free now, to be fair. And he can more break in now. Billy again, up at midfield with number 10. Michael Hogan. Conway's keeping him outside him. I know Hogan gives a quick ball across the mountain. McMahon, McMahon to number 10. Maloney, who's played an awful lot of ball. In all the way in, maybe Stack puts a push on. Put gives a push there to, to John Daly. But referee says, no, don't want to know about it. If I'm bad for one side, I'm bad from the other side. Holy mother of God, there's only 40 seconds left in this game. John, I don't know, is there much injury time, John? Do you have any idea? I can see the board. One minute of injury time remaining. Will this be the greatest day in the history of Drumbra for GA? We'll join great clubs who have won titles. Nemo Rangers have 14 Munster titles. St. Finn Bars of Cork have four. Castlehaven, Dr. Crocs and UCC have all treated their names. Castle Island, Desmonds and Lone Rangers, they have won two. Will we join the likes of Angel, Dr. Austin Stack, Doon Big, East Kerry, O'Donovan Ross at Thoman College and Kilmore Ebrickin. They've all won. In five minutes, will Drum Brawford have won? I hope they will. But Kilmore Ebrickin haven't finished yet. They're fighting for everything here. Line ball. Umpire put, says that he points towards the, the Drum Brawford goal. He says to the line ball, there's 30 minutes. Oh, geez, I stopped my watch. There's 30 minutes and seven seconds gone. I'm after stopping my watch. I presume time must be up. Oh, God, don't say they'll get a goal inside. Kilmore Ebrickin with the number two gets a shot and puts the ball over the bar. Declan Callan, Johnny Moose, time must be up. They're saying time is up here, I can't believe it. It'll be unbelievable. The Carter Michael O'Connor Cup up to knock two. Magma Lachlan said she was getting a new press if they won it. She was going to put it in. Shit, the referee is saying no. Come on, come on, come on. Game has got to take kick out. Please, God Almighty. The Drum Bradford fans are roaring. They're saying, referee, it's all over. Is it over? Watch the subs, they're on the sideline. Timmy Stokes, Garnoon and Kevin Culhane. Aidan Butler, Connor Brosnan. Jason Stokes wins it in midfield. And the referee gives a free. I think it's all over. I hope it's all over. The boys from Clare beside me, they're shocked. They, haven't, they can't believe what's after happening. Referee calls back to number five. He's gone, he's gone. That's his second year, the captain. He's going to walk off the field. What a way to go, unfortunately for him. It's not nice to see any players in Daft Kilmore. He's breaking more than a dirty team. Gal Noonan is below with Mike Quaid. Is it over? Is it over? We don't know. No, God Almighty. Referee is putting off the number five. He's giving grief. No need to be like that. No, it's very disappointing to see that. He won't go off the field. He's fighting. They're arguing. Is this going to be some day for Drum Braff, for GA, for Tom McLaughlin and his men? Referee, will you blow it up for God's sake? The game is all over. He gives it to Owen Barry. Owen Barry pops it into Shawnee Buckley. Shawnee Buckley across to Johnny Kelly. Shawnee Buckley. Oh man, oh, mighty, I don't know what I'm going to do. Referee, you're some. If you won't blow up this. Derry McCarthy. Derry. Jerry, please don't foul him. Come on, Les, we can, it can be over. It can be all over. Ah, it's a long ball inside to the full forward. Number 14, Adrian Odwell. Odwell has been pushed out the field. Referee, you've plenty time played now. Oh, no. He gives a free, and that's a ridiculous by the referee. They have one chance to level this game and make it six points apiece. I don't believe the referee gave that free. There must be well over 30, 32 or 3 minutes gone. They have one effort, that is. This is going to break our hearts if they put this ball over the bar. It's going to be an absolute disaster. An absolute disaster. It's, out, it's the very last kick of the game on the 13-yard line. Out by the corner. It's out, out in the end line. He's going to have one good long effort. Watch how much he runs. And he hits it. That's no good. That's wide ref. Blow it up. Yes. Yes. John Bradford are the champions of Manchester. They're legends. Every one of them. It's great to be involved with a club like this. Look at the scenes below us. Look at it. Unbelievable. There's 15 minutes. There's 26 players in the panel. Every one of them from here has got a number one. The 26. I know. And Jim Bain. Butler. Christine McCarthy. Mass McCarthy. Physio, Mary O'Keefe, Bridget Jones, 
It is, is absolutely unbelievable, John Neenan. Unbelievable scenes. Yes, absolutely. A marvellous a team performance. A team at half time that didn't look like it, but Ned, Ned English, he must have said something brilliant to them. John, John Brother and the rest of the selectors, they must have risen them off of their backsides at half time and, and got them going. It was tough, it was dour stuff. McLaughlin played a star game there in that second half. The young lads, Derry, Derry McCarthy, Owen Barry, and another one of the stars, but Johnny Buckley, all the big men when he came down, they were all, they all played star parts. But, but, I'm going to give him my man of the match. Maybe a little bit of a surprise, but I think he played a star game. Not well, one of the quieter men in the team. I give it to Mikey Gadsy. Yes, indeed, he had an outstanding game, Mikey. The scenes below us are unbelievable. Was he really inch below there? With, with one of his children? Well, we have to go on over in a hurry. We need to go down and we get interviews below. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
school as well. I'll keep it to English. Uh, first of all, it's an honour for me to be captain of the oh. Club of Rockford. Whether we win anything or lose anything, it's a huge honour. They're the best bunch of players, friends you could have. And I think it proved out today, today, when the pressure was on, we all stood by each other, we backed each other up at 10 men, and we just held up the game. Enjoy no winning in English to the hollow men that's after bringing success to John Bradford. Nate, you know what it means, what you're after doing here today. It's something unbelievable. Only one Limerick team ever won that, that Munster Championship before. They were, they were only one Limerick men playing from. What you've done with this team, Nate, and what you've done the crowd of it is something unbelievable. Well, <laughs> you said what I've done. What they've done is unbelievable. You know, it shows the, the resources in, in every group of human beings. They were fantastic. The weight of history was on them today, which always puts more pressure on teams to deliver. And by Christ did they deliver against that weight of history. A fiercely fought battle by two very competitive 
and ferocious teams and fair dues to Kilmurray of Bricken as well. But those guys, fair dues to them, they delivered for the tiny community down there, for all the hard work they've put in, for the belief, for the crack, for the sheer enjoyment they've had, all the fantastic things. You know, I'm delighted for them, so proud for them. And I say, they're the people, they're the men that did it. And you kept your game playing, even though there was close people from the stand were always, you kicked the ball, kicked the ball. You stuck to your plan, you're, you're very, you, you have a particular game plan, you stuck to today, and it paid off in the finish. Well, I said to them at half time that at the end of the day, the team that could perform best under pressure, when the pressure would be highest, which would be near the end of the game, would be the team that would come out on top, you know? And that, 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 that was Drum Bradford. All during the second half, you know, which was the, the vital half in any game, they upped their performance, they scrapped better. John Bruder said, lads, we have to win the battle first, then we have to put our title. They battled much harder in the second half and upped their performances, left nothing out there in the field, and they got their just rewards. Great game from two great teams. Again, full dues to Kilmurray of Bricken as well for a great battle. Because without great opponents, you can't have great matches. No, you can't. I'm sure Ned will enjoy it tonight. But Ned, in the back of their mind, I know them players, Croke Park's in the back of their mind. In the back of those, their mind, I think these lads know that there's another obstacle out of the way now. And we can bank this one. This one is it's like who wants to be a millionaire. There was a doubt with this one and that's why the pressure was there. But now we can bank this. Nobody can take away a Munster title from us. The next game, they'll be free of pressure. Now we'll be going for a different goal. And we certainly won't be going up just to make up the numbers against the Ulster champions, whoever they are. Yes, indeed. Cross Midland or Ballandary, I'm sure these boys aren't afraid of no one. They, 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 they don't think there's any team that can beat them. Well, they certainly will go out and they'll do their best. And any team that beats them will certainly deserve it. That's all I say. Nate, I'll let you go on. Enjoy yourself. That Very well done. Johnny, maybe not the prettiest of games, but an outstanding win for Limerick, for Drumbra, for Limerick football. Uh, a dream come true. The best day of my life in the Gaelic Crowns. It was uh, after Nemo, I said, had they reached their pinnacle? They hadn't. The first 10 minutes, I suppose, Kilmurray, Ilbrickin, had a lion's share of position. They had three ways. The Emmons Scott had the ball in his hand three times. But I said after 10 minutes, Drumbra would win the game because I knew the, the resilience, the composure, and they played out of their skins. And I think, in the end, they deserved it. And full credit to everyone of the Drumbradford panel, their backroom team and all involved because they're complete gentlemen and down through the years they have success after success. It was built, it didn't happen overnight and I think they're the finest team that ever represents Limerick at club level. And it's a historic day because let's go back to the club championship. It was, only, it was never won by a complete Limerick team. It was won once by Thomond College in the history of it, 35-36 uh, year history. And I thought Drum Colourhood Bradford were absolutely outstanding. The second half, the their patience, their endurance, and every one of them deserves nothing but the greatest of praise. Yeah, you, it shows what can be done with a team when there's a big effort put in. Uh, Dennis lost to me the last day, they went from novice to Nemo, they were playing novice football 10 years ago, Johnny. There's a crowd of them there that stuck together all through, like so Johnny Broder used to be playing with them, his manager now, Tom McLaughlin, Pat Donnelly, all them boys, they're there with a long time, Jason Stoffs, a lot of football done. But it shows what can be done when, when a team stick together like that. I go back to the under 14 final that Trump Colour Bradford played Mount Collins. Going back a good many years, many of those players are playing that team. Mount Collins won that year. From Bradford came on, they went up junior B, junior A, intermediate, senior, and uh, they have great character, great discipline. And I think this year there was a newfound impetus. The return of Tommy Stack, Jason Stokes were a bit help, and there was a kind of a bonding between the old and the new. Uh, Gary, Gary Egan there, Derry McCarthy, Owen Barry, they all play their parts. It would be very unfair to single out anyone, but I suppose if one had to single out one player as a clubman, Definitely the best club man in the Limerick of the last 10 years. That's Tom McLaughlin, the knock touched man led by example, his leadership and his outstanding durability, and he excelled in the second half. But uh, they were really brilliant. And I, another crow team, I must praise Kilmore Ilbrickin, because during the game, there, were little, there wasn't a dirty game, there were incidents off the ball, and fair play to him, 
They were there in the end. They stood in the field. Their manager came into Drumbrata dressing room after. And from the heart, congratulated him. It was heartbreak for Drumbrata four years ago. I suppose heartbreak for them today. But I am proud of Drumbrata and very proud. And it was a great spectacle and a historic occasion that we'll never forget. Thanks very much, Johnny. Johnny, we'll have a bomb for Noctoosh before Christmas. You might come up to us that night. Well, I, I, I'd I, be in Noctoosh for definitely that night. I don't know what way will they go home. And there'll be the fires will light Noctoosh again. My God, Neil, thanks very much, Johnny. <laughs> I enjoy now by John Bruno. John knows Sandy win. Mighty win and a good win for Limerick, fo for Limerick football. Well, whatever about Limerick football, first of all, Tommy, it's a great win for ourselves. Like, you know, uh, the bonus is that maybe Limerick football might, might prosper from this, but for that group of lads inside her and the people who are involved, it's, it's been a, a great day. And hopefully that we'll enjoy it now for the next few days and, and, and really celebrate it properly. Like, you know. Yeah, I was saying to Johnny Welch, it shows when the team stick together, they stay, it's in this last the last day from Novice to Nemo. The team, stay, a lot of you are there, even like yourself, are there since you were playing Novice football and Mass McCarthy. And, a lot of the players today are there with, are there with, with maybe 9 or 10 years and it shows what can be done when, when players stick together like that and be a good group of fellows stick together. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, Siobhan McCarthy told me this morning that uh, it's something like 16 years since we con contested a Junior B final in Croom many years ago. Like, and and uh, the, uh, so for all those fellows to stay, stay together and then, then the likes of Mac and Jason and all that group arrived on together and they all stayed together but they're great friends and I think the friendship showed there in the second half today where we had to dig deep and everyone trusted each other and thankfully we got the result in the end. Yeah, like the it. football might, might, it wasn't the prettiest for the neutral supporters but he had a game plan and he stuck to it very well, he had to stick to it. To be honest, our game plan without the window in the first half because of the pressure Kilmore you're putting us under and the lads probably just were a little bit nervous but in the second half they showed their true, their true qualities and I think we dominated the second half fairly well and we'd have been unfortunate to, to lose to that point at the end. Like, eh? Yeah, it would have been a heartbreaker if, if that ball went all around. The referee of course didn't do you much much favours either, you were surely cost him. Uh, yeah, well, half -time. the thing about the referee is you can't control him, so you just have to take the decisions that, 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 that he, he makes. Yes, I thought it, at times he gave fairly harsh frees and, and maybe gave them a few soft frees, but listen, that's, that's life. That We were very happy with the referee in the semi-final against Nemo. And um, just, you just have to take whatever ref you're given on the day, a bit like the pitch, and just, and, and just work on. Like, eh? That's it, Johnny, I'll let you back right, into a very right, happy drum right, for dressing room. I mean, I mean, I'm joined by Margaret McLaughlin, yeah. Margaret, uh, mother of Captain Tom McLaughlin today. A very proud day for, for, for yourself, Margaret, and I'm everyone very, involved. A very proud day for myself and a very proud day for Drum Bradford. Great victory. Great to do today. If we didn't do today, they would be telling us Nemo were only a, a flash in the pan. It would have been, it would have been an absolute disaster, Margaret. An Margo, absolute disaster. Thank I, you very much, Tommy. I'll have to I, go I, to the one. I, I, I was now. saying to Johnny Wilch, we'll have a one for an October. We, we might bring him up. We could bring him up and top him into it. Maybe That's no, very good, very done. good. Thanks very much, Margaret. <laughs> I'm Jay now by the other man that's been there throughout the years, Dennis. You've been there for the last couple of years. Not and yeah. 16, 16 years you've been there. A long time. But t today's victory was a long time coming. Mighty victory for the club. Tommy, I didn't think I'd live to see it, Tom. No. To be with you. I didn't ever thought I'd see the day that we most of the club champions. It was no good beating Nemo. Nemo's victory was gone out the door unless, unless they came on here today to win the Munster Championship. It's better than a bar of gold from America. Definitely. Very good. Yeah, you, you were in England during the week. I didn't yeah. think you'd make it back, but you made it. I met by Ferry, Ferry. <laughs> by the Ferry, yes. By the Ferry, with La, Dennis Law is back here with us today. Come here, I'm sure, on the back of our minds, you'll be thinking about going to Croke Park. Yes, into February, with help of God. We play on Corofin, as far as I know, the Corofin champions, as far as I know, no. I thought it was maybe the Ulster champions, but no, who knows? I mean, Tolton's the Conor Finn champions. These boys are... Yeah, the Conor champions, sorry. These boys are afraid, no. There's a lot of the boys there, are there for life, since 92 or 3. Yes. The likes of Mackie and Owen, Conway, they're all well experienced. And a great bunch of players yeah, to work with. Very united. Very united indeed. You were selected with him, didn't you, Sergeant Joe? You're, you've been there for how, how long time? How long? How many years you were with him? Just Fifth, 16, 92. 16 years. Oh, the novice in 92. And as you said, the last day from novice to Nemo. The junior in 98, intermediate in 99, and senior 2001, 3, 4, and 8. And Munster champions, champions in 2008. Outstanding. Come here, Dennis. I'm sure you, Trot will give you a few days after during the week to have a few points. Well, we'll have a few points in, all right. Sam, I can drink it too. Very good, very, yeah. very good. Thank we will see you after the Ireland semi final. Thanks, Dennis. Join with um, Pat Donnelly. Pat, mighty day for Drumbra for Jay and for yourself. Oh, we've had days like this before. Do you know, Moss McCarthy started all. We won the Junior B County Final today, 16 years ago, Moss, was it? Like it all started, and every every time you win something, it's a massive achievement. But today That's is definitely the creme de la creme. You know. It shows when a group of fellas stick together, like the Moss and um, Johnny Broder, and even yourself, you were there a long time with uh, Tom McLaughlin and maybe Michal Reedy and a few more. It shows what can be done when you stick together and put your mind to something. Absolutely. Uh, Bob Sheehy definitely set the wheels in motion for this. Um, 
he took his admirers, he went to the club and asked him could he have us for three years as guinea pigs for a project he was doing. And he brought in professionalism into the club and it has, it has grown from there and Moss has, Moss has done massive work for the club and I think every player realises that and today is as much for Moss as it is for anyone else. It was a good group of guinea pigs he got that time when he got his hands in you, wasn't it? Yeah, and some of us are still showing the signs of being pigs, you know, but yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. the likes of McLaughlin there could now do the losing a few pounds over Christmas, but sure we'll get working on him now from uh, here to then. He'll the be good, but if you go to South Crow Park, I'm sure he'll be fairly fit at that stage. Yeah, but sure, he should have been at Crow Park a long time ago with the Limerick football team, but sure, you'd never know, maybe now he'll get his call. Very good, go on, go away, Saul. Good luck. Mass, well done. Mass McCarthy, the man has put in a massive effort over the last 15 or 16 years, Mass. Paid off today. Absolutely delighted. Uh, huge, huge, huge achievement. We looked at the names in the cup inside. Nemo Rangers and you know, I could keep going. Um, Lion Rangers, every single one of them. And Drum Bradford is going to be there now, you know, so we're up at the top. Yeah, but bottom line, they, they, they deserve it. Johnny and Johnny and Nate have done a tremendous job this year, you know, it was like an injection in, into them, you know, and they did, they did very, very well. But it, and the boys believed in it. And it must make you proud to know that you've done so much with a team like that and you, you've given it a big effort. You know the boys very well there, everyone, the boys behind us. And it's great to see it paying off at the end of the day, and it's personal. Oh, sure, that's sport, you know, we, we have the highs, we have the lows. And I'm delighted for these sellers because today is one great high. And, you know, it, it's a victory that uh, they can't take it away from us. You know, it, it wasn't yeah, easily yeah. won with, with a tough semi-final in the county, with a tough final in the county. Tough game against Nemo. We were written off, written off, written off. But Diesel is done like being written off. Uh, you know? The way these boys were thinking, I was saying to, um, to Nate English, the way these boys, the, the psychology of them, they'll be, they'll be thinking in the back of their minds, they'll be thinking Croke Park. Well, the, 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 uh, the other side of it, I don't think they will to be going. It's, it's the next game. That's the way we've treated it. And that's what I mean, the wins and the losses. And like we got tripped up ourselves in matches that we should have won and we didn't win. Um, and at the exact same day today, it's always the next match and we can't look beyond it, but we have a monster one in the bag now. Like, so, you, know, you, can, you can enjoy that tonight in Ray Masson for next yeah. week. Well done, boy. Oh, Enjoy now by Mike Quaid, another selector with, um, with the team. Mike, a massive achievement today. Huge achievements, yeah. Um, I suppose I won't sink in what we've actually done for a while. Like, uh, I was just saying to your own father a while ago, <laughs> I'm away in Cuckoo Land at the moment. So I just things are just. Which, um, oh, no, we will settle down and we'll enjoy it in between them. We'll, we'll drive out. Yeah, maybe right. seven or eight weeks before we'll be playing all Ireland semi final, but I'm sure you'll celebrate this weekend. Anyway. Yeah, I think so. Like, I mean, as I said, I mean, I think the last time I said to you, I laughed about the Nemo game. Never thought about anything else beyond that. And same with the Munster final today. We never thought about anything else beyond today. So we'll enjoy it today like we, we, like we, we normally do. And it was great for fellas like yourself, Moss McCarthy. They're there all down through the years. You yeah, put, in, put in a massive yeah. effort and just, I, I just would, see it yeah. paying off. I wouldn't, have the, I wouldn't have the mileage put up now, the mass would have put up. Like, but yeah, I'm with a lot of them lads since they were, we were talking about it yesterday. That we, we won an under 16 shield behind in Glynn um, in shit and dirt, uh, I think it was it 99 or 2000. And seven of that under 16 team that won a shield behind in Glynn played today. Like, so that's, that's, I mean, yeah, you have to take great half from yeah. that. Johnny Wilsh told me that he saw that he saw a lot of that team playing under 14. And under 14 West against them um, against Mount Collins. He said Mount Collins won that day. But John well, Bradford this the same day Drum, behind tour. Drum, yeah. Drum Bradford went on and, and they showed what they're made of. And to win today was an unbelievable achievement. It was, it was an unbelievable achievement to lecture. And the way we the way we just in the end it wasn't it was just pure and utter heart that dug it out, Ledger. And a being a great bunch of people that, that dug dug that the result out. And John when the pressure really came on, do you mean that was savage pressure out there? So they still stuck to their guns. They still tried to keep doing what they wanted to do. Do you mean what they were t showed what to do all year? And I mean they deserve it. They deserve it. That bunch of players deserve it. I was talking to Marty Morris at half time up there above. I said Marty in, in towards hold hold with it, Marty. Marty said Marty said Drum Bradford wouldn't wouldn't have the stuff to hold out Kilmory Bricken in the second half, but we showed Marty otherwise. Yeah, so Matty doesn't get it right all the time, and Matty will be a small bit biased, I think. Matty's from down around that area, I think, so, yeah. So, I, I, I hope you're reminded him once the final whistle bit. By God, I didn't show. I must go on and get Tom McLaughlin. Thanks, Mike. Enjoy now by Tom McLaughlin. Tom, the proudest day of your life, without a doubt.
I suppose it will be unless I get married. If I get married, that will be the problem. <laughs> She's well born in the place that day. I was talking to Pat Donnelly there a few minutes ago. He said he was surprised with the likes of yourself now, Shovey and the 33 or 4, and that you were able to keep going for the 60 minutes out there today. But he said you, you, you're you improving the whole time. But you'll be fair, you'll be fit shortly. He said if we get as far as Croke Park, he said you'll be outstanding. If I had another, I suppose, another four months under my belt, I'd, I'd be nearly ready to kill then. I'd be fit for the factory. You would, in a few more spots, I suppose. There'd be no fear you. No, no, but uh, on a serious note, it's uh, a great performance, like I said in the speech. That we're all a great bunch of players, our friends and players, like, and everyone, everyone sticks together and we all back each other up. And it's a, it's a massive day for the parish and even surrounding areas because everybody's backed us today. Our neighbours and our rivals and everything, they backed us. Everyone was there, and even yeah. the last five minutes and ten minutes, the friendship really showed when, when, when fellas with our backs were to the wall. Yeah. You really ground it out, you had to grind it out there. Had, yeah, we knew like, was, we were under severe pressure and we knew like, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity and we might never see the day again. So we said, look, we'll have one right crack at it. I know we were looking then they could have pulled the jaw out of it. We just held up, but thanks for the guy. We, we'll, We'll enjoy it and t we'll, uh, we'll make a nice little base out of it. I'm after inviting Johnny Welch to knock touch to, uh, for, for a bonfire, so I, I, I hope yeah. we've pallets and a few, a few tires above to We'll have pallets out with the way the weather is now, to be, to be, it's perfect weather for the bonfire, so we, we'll make the most of it. I suppose a few five gallon drums of diesel will we'll stop we'll the People going, the diesel is going yeah. down in price. Tom, we better let you go again because I know well, you, you want to go and enjoy yourself. Excellent. Well done, Just, just before we finish off here there on this historic day, John needed a mighty day for the parish of Dunbrafford. Yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a great achievement. Not pretty stuff by no means, but uh, it was, it was um, the plan worked, I suppose, to perfection. At times there, I was very worried because in the last 10 minutes, uh, we seemed to have no followers. We, we were all back, crowding the backs, but it, it worked out, thankfully, it worked out very well. Um, there were great performances there, like Emma Scholar did everything in the, in the goals that he was asked of. And you had your sure, deal area, I suppose, is one of the best full cornerbacks in Ireland. And Tommy Stack has all the experience. And Mikey can say, I thought Mikey impressed me very much. We had the, the usual great game, didn't you see? We, you know, I, I, I picked Mikey as man of the match, but if we didn't have the Tom McLaughlin's and the Shawnee Buckley's and, 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 and Gary Egan, another man that had a great game, uh, you, you, you must have them. But I thought that Mikey came out of his blocks today and, 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 and Mikey. But, but we talk about, with your own Barry and you your Derry McCarthy young lads. Played, played my, my three games. Every, everyone needed to give it the effort, and it showed there. We were saying, I was saying, Tom McLaughlin, it showed in the last 10 minutes. They're, like, they're great friends, all them boys, and they all put in a massive effort. And they had everyone had, they had to talk, took 15 minutes today, and even 16 when John O'Kelly came on. But there was no bad man in the field. No, there was no bad man in the field. Um, you know, go back and, and think about, we'll say about 19, 1995 or 96 when Moscati put that team together, started putting that team together, and they're playing junior B football. Yes, Even before Drum and Bradford came together, I remember the two teams, they'd be knocked out the first round, the first round of the championship, June or Beer. That's as good as they were. And there's, there's a chance now of Croke Park, maybe we'll get another day out of it anyway. Well, we won't go, obviously, we'll go for Port Leash first, uh, and maybe we might be locked up up there, you know. Stay above for the weekend. That's all anyway from the Gaelic rounds here today. We'll let it at that, and hopefully we'll see you for the semi final in Port Leash.